So, um, sorry, Rachel, again, can you just let people know that there was a webinar uh, part one last week, we can send out as well if they request a copy. Thanks. Yeah. So maybe we should kick off now. So um, welcome, everybody. Uh, you're very welcome again to our um, second part of the Tanzanian um, series on uh, what you can do when you go to Tanzania on a safari or indeed on a vacation. So last week we covered um, the more general aspect of Tanzania and the Northern Circuit and um, covering, you know, Serengeti, Arusha, the Crater, uh, Tangiri, um, and this week we are doing a different part. So we're going to get Ed to kick off and tell us why we should consider the other lesser known parts of Tanzania. So over to you, Ed. Right, thanks, Yvonne. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, it's truly exciting um, to speak about this region uh, to you today. Um, you know, compared to to last week where we did the Northern Circuit, um, which is pretty much your your go-to region. We, we today we're going to look at different regions. Um, so, just as a very quick introduction, my name is Ed Stein. Um, I own a company called Wanderlust. Um, so, I've got the amazing privilege of traveling to to all of these properties and um, and selling some of the most amazing areas in Tanzania. Um, so we hope to get you out there. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, for, for over 20 years that I've been involved in it, Tanzania was always my first love. And as I said earlier, look, uh, is that I uh, only, a, only a few years ago, I really started experiencing all of the southern parts and the western sites, um, which really opened a brand new world for me. Um, if you, if you, I mean, for most of you, uh, if you get your inquiry in for, for Tanzania, then in all likelihood, you're going to go to your go-to region, which is the Northern Circuit. And um, I think there's two reasons for that. It's that most of us have traveled there and have experienced it, or most of you as well. Um, but then the other side is also is the great marketing that was done around, um, around the migration. So people generally know where they want to go. But as a specialist, you should really, um, you should really have a, a, a wider knowledge of Tanzania and that's what we want to do today. So today we want to introduce the western and southern circuit to you. So those are the exotic places, um, you know, places like um, like Nyerere, um, uh, Rua, uh, then we go across into Katavi, Mahale, even a small, you know, small part like Gombe. Um, but then also uh, Sujit is also here, he's going to link us back up into Zanzibar, see how we tie all of that um, seamlessly up. Um, the one thing that I can say to you is I, I don't want to take too much time. I mean, obviously, you know, the guys with the photos is, is a lot more interesting. Um, but definitely, once you start traveling into these southern regions, um, you would you would have found that somewhere like a Serengeti, for example, it can get really crowded in, in, in the high season um, where you can, can find that your time is very limited on a, on, on, um, on a sighting. Whereas when you go into these other parks, I mean, um, like Bridget said um, a little bit before the call, I mean, there's only like six properties down in in, in Rua. I mean, so so really, I mean, you feel like you're an absolute rock star because you can spend as much time as you want to um, at these different sightings. It also opens up all of these other gems that you probably have never known about. I mean, you've um, you know, places like like Katavi with the with the highest density of hippos and crocs in the world. I mean, it's amazing. Um, uh, I've been on game drives where we would see one hippo out of the water, and everybody was like, "Yay, there's a hippo out of the water!" Um, you know, and there, literally, it's like impala. Um, so, so just the experience is unbelievable. You get places like the Mahale where you go into uh, we we experience the chimps. It's absolutely controlled, you know, just with the number of people that go up there. Um, and truly, one of those experiences, I think it will change your life once you see it. Um, I've had a friend of mine when I when I started selling chimpanzees, he said to me, you know, but why were you so emotional when you saw them for the first time? And it's probably because I've got a resemblance to one. Um, but, I mean, that is just... <laughs> It is, it's an absolute amazing experience. Um, it's all very, very well connected in terms of flights and various um, uh, companies fly out there. Um, so which each of the individual properties will tell you a little bit more about. Um, but most importantly, just remember that once you, once you move a little bit further off beat, uh, off that beaten track, um, the, the rewards are just absolutely plentiful. Um, so don't be scared if you haven't visited, don't, um, you know, don't, don't be nervous about it. The guys are here. They're going to tell you absolutely everything about it in a moment. Great. I'm just going to get a map, um, Ed, so you can show us cool. a little bit where we're going to. So start off. And just 
while, whilst you're getting that map up, what we're going to have today is we're going to have uh, the bush experience, we're going to have a water experience, we're going to have a chimp experience. So you're going to see, like, like we were just talking earlier, that a lot of people don't realize you can see chimps in Tanzania. Um, and I was just saying, like, the second visit that I did when I went to Ruaha, um, I fell in love because, like, it's, it's sort of like a hidden, you know, little place away that I felt only I knew about. And I fell in love with birding then, which I hadn't, you know, previously. So there's lots of amazing things that um, are to be seen in Tanzania. So, Ed, do you want to take us through the maps there? Yeah, certainly. Um, Silvana, I think just one other thing to also just say about it, you know, it's also just when you sell, when you sell itineraries to, um, to your clients, you know, and everybody has done the Northern Circuit, this is just one of those things where they'll come back with that experience where they'll say, listen, yeah, it's not the same as what everybody else in our, um, in our book club have, have experienced. So, so truly unique. Um, so last week we did, you know, the Northern yeah. Circuit, the Serengeti and around this area here in the north. So today yeah. we're going uh, down here, is it it? Now guide me. Down there, uh, a little bit. Yeah, if you can just go in a little bit. Um, so we, we've got um, uh, Ruha. Sorry, I can't see clearly on my screen from this side. Um, but we've got Ruha and Nyerere that's down there in, in, in that southern region. And then you go all the way out to the western side. Sorry, I can't see the screen, unfortunately, on my yeah, side. Yeah, and it's not showing the park there, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But then you link it from there, um, you know, Rua being the closest in to Mahale, you would then, um, uh, sorry, Katavi being the closest, you would then go up into Katavi and into Mahale. Um, yeah, and that, I'm sure each, each one of the properties will tell you a little bit more about the flight connections generally on a, a, a Monday and a Thursday um, that they do these round trips. So, so it's great if you can combine that southern region. Okay, so will we go over to Bridget now in uh, Salu Safari and uh, company, and she, uh, she's going to tell us about Siwanda Camp. So over to you, Bridget. Uh, you're muted still. Sorry. Um, thanks, everybody. Thanks for including me. Um, for those of you that I don't know, I'm Bridget, I'm representing Salu Safari Company. Very excited to share with you today a little bit more about Siwandu. The beauty about where we located is we right on Lake Nazakira. Um, we've got our rooms that literally overlook the, the shore of the lake. Um, we were one of the first camps, um, the pioneers in the Salu, actually now known as the Nerere National Park. It was renamed in November last year. I think while we were all dealing with COVID, a lot of people didn't realize that the name has actually changed. Um, just to give you an idea of the size of the park, we're talking about 55,000 square kilometers. It's actually bigger than the size of Switzerland. So, and it's four times larger than the size of the Serengeti. So it really is a really big park. Most of the camps are kind of in the northern part. Um, so it's actually easy to get to, 45 minute flight from Dar es Salaam um, into the Suwandu airstrip and five minutes from camp. The way the camp is designed as well is we can actually split it up into sort of a north and south camp. So for a small party traveling together, we can give you sort of exclusive use. So up to six people in North Camp and then other guests in South, and we don't mix the two. So we have those two options as to how we can combine the camp. Um, we don't take children under six years old because completely open, not fenced, um, lots of game obviously comes walking through the camp. And it's also one of the few areas where you can do both land and water-based activities. Having the lake. You have some photos to show us as well, don't you? Just so we can get a sense of place. Um, I can. Um, we can just go to the map as well on the next slide. Um, and I can show you exactly where we are. Sorry, I don't know why it's not going to the next slide. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Um, so we're right in the middle at the top end of the, of the park on the lake. Um, and as I said, we can do both land and water-based activities. In fact, one of the highlights we offer to guests is a pontoon lunch. Every guest gets an opportunity to go out on the pontoon and have lunch. We do try and keep it as an element of surprise um, because it really is just the most amazing experience. We can also do um, boating on the refugee um, river system. 
So we do get guests who want to do both, um, as well as game drives, and we can do walking. Walking, we don't take children under 16, so 16 and older to go out walking. It's also a UNESCO heritage site, um, and it has actually retained its status. At one stage, there was rumor they were going to lose that status, um, but thankfully, um, they've retained it. Also, the highest population of wild dog in the whole of Tanzania can be found in the Nareira National Park. So your chances of seeing wild dog is really good. And we also have a hashtag, Giraffic Park, because of the giraffe, loads of giraffe found um, in the Nareira. We also, with our, um, the way our tents are designed, um, they're an octagon shape. So really nice with being able to see out towards the lake. Um, huge um, tents with a makuti thatch on top. So really helps with those hot summer months with um, some extra insulation. Um, and there you can see the pontoon, a picture of our pontoon boat there on the lake and guests out there uh, walking with our guide. Um, I'm then gonna go on to just to mention our other two properties briefly. We've got Jongamera, which is on the Jongamera River, right in the southern part of the Ruwa National Park. As Ed mentioned, there are only six camps in, in the Ruwa. And the nice thing about the park is you can easily combine a northern property um, with, with our camp because the landscape and the experiences are so different. We also seasonal. That's one thing about the Southern Circuit with us being off the beaten track, um, we are only open from June to mid-March each year, purely because of the long rains um, that come in and then just not accessible. Um, you know, it's that real cotton soil and not pleasant to try and drive around. In fact, you get stuck more than you can drive. <laughs> um, yeah, and easily combinable, the parks. The so flights are daily. Um, the flight from Dar es Salaam through to the Rawa takes you a bit longer. It's about an hour and 45 minutes if you're on the direct flight. There are also flights out of the Rawa up to um, Katavi, as Ed mentioned, and I'm sure um, Fatima from Mbali and Bali will tell you more about the flight access there. Also easy to link back to Dar es Salaam or um, onto Zanzibar, if people are going to end off at the beach on Zanzibar. And then just um, something else to mention to you is our island property, Fanjovi, which is south of Dar es Salaam, um, just south of Mafia. We are um, undertaking a complete rebuild at the moment. Um, so some exciting stuff happening there. Um, and as soon as we know more details and we have our final drawings that are signed off, we'll be able to share um, what, what the new property is going to look like. But it's just us on your private island, beautiful white sandy beaches, great for snorkeling and scuba diving right off the beach. And that's Salu Safari Company. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. Thanks a million, Bridget. So now we're going to pass over to Fatima. And we're going to go to Mbali Mbali Mahala Lodge and hear about what happens on the western side of the country. And that's very interesting about the park changing name. I think we all have to remember that going forward. And you're another person who's very happy with your new president. Fatima, um, you're on mute. Thank you, Ed. <laughs> Can everybody hear me now? Great. Uh, so my name is Fatima. For those of you who don't know me, I'm one of the directors at Mbali Mbali Lodges and Camps. So Mbali Mbali is a portfolio of five lodges, one hotel in Tanzania. And I want to thank Adams and Butler for giving us this opportunity to speak more about the chimpanzee trekking safaris experience in Tanzania. So our story as a company starts in Western Tanzania, I want to talk more about chimpanzee population there. So there's about a thousand chimpanzees living in the wild across the whole border of Western Tanzania. And the two locations where you can visit them and meet with them are in Gombe and Mahale National Park. Now Gombe has been made famous by Jane Goodall and her research since the 1960s. And that's a topic for another time. But today we'll focus on Mahale. 
In Mahale, the chimpanzees there have been studied since the 1960s by Japanese researchers from the Kyoto University. So the habituation that you get in terms of the sightings of chimpanzees being so ease at ease with viewings in terms of clients coming through and groups coming through and just continuing about their daily activities is unlike some of the other experiences that you get in Rwanda and Uganda and the neighboring countries. So that's really unique about Tanzania. Now, before I go further, I'm gonna let uh, Gio just play that video clip that I sent through. through. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect, thank you so much. So that gives you some insight into what Mahale is like. So Gio, are you gonna pull up the presentation now that I have set up? Yes, just give me one moment, I'll share it now. Great, thank you. So a little bit about Mahale. Mahale is a national park that spreads across 1,600 kilometers squared. So it's quite a large national park. And what's unique about it is there's only two lodges that operate the chimpanzee safari experiences there. One of them is us and the other camp being Greystoke Mahale Nomads Camp. So the, the two lodges are actually just a five minute boat ride away. And in terms of access, that's something that I wanna focus on because it makes it one of the most challenging things for selling this destination is not knowing how to get there. So Gio, if you could just go to the next slide with the map. So you'll see Mbali Mbali Mahali Lodge there highlighted in the red box and some of our other destinations in the north and in the west. In terms of access, we have a shared charter that operates twice a week on Mondays and Thursdays out of Arusha. So on a Monday and Thursday, your clients can be picked up from Arusha or anywhere in the Northern Circuit. And that can be Kilimanjaro, the Serengeti, Manyara, Gorongoro, wherever you they might be on, on a Northern Circuit safari. And we'd pick them up on a Monday or Thursday and take them into the West. And the ideal route for that flight would be from Arusha into Katavi, then into Mahale, then into Kigoma for access to Gombe, and then back across into Arusha. And in the same way, we can also drop off clients who might have been in our Western camps into one of the Northern Circuit locations, which might be again, the Serengeti, Ngorongoro, Kilimanjaro, if they are gonna continue their safari. So that flexibility is there, but what limits the planning for that itinerary is clients can only go in and out on a Monday and Thursday, therefore they have to stay at the location for three or four nights, ideally. And uh, those flights operate on Mondays and Thursdays. And if you are connecting from the South, Bridget did touch upon uh, the Safari Airlink flights from the Southern Circuit. So it is possible to connect from the South, but it's not a direct flight out of Dar es Salaam. So if you're flying from Dar es Salaam, you would need to sleep the night in Ruaha for one night at one of the camps over there and then connect on the Monday and Thursday through to Katavi Mahale Gombe, uh, if those are the destinations that you wanna visit. Another way to access Mahale is something new that we've brought on in terms of service over the last two years, and that's using the Air Tanzania flights out of Dar es Salaam. So Air Tanzania is a commercial airline, and it's really gotten more reliable over the last few years. I know it's been a challenge in the past, but we truly do have to say that their service has stepped up. And we've had great success, especially through COVID, where we haven't had as many shared charters operating because of the limitation of the number of clients moving through the Western Circuit. To really capitalize on these flights, not only are they 10% of the price of the shared charters, but they also operate every day of the week, um, giving clients that flexibility in terms of schedules if they don't wanna fly in on that Monday, Thursday schedule. So flights from Dar es Salaam into Kigoma, 
take about an hour and a half on the flight. And then from Goma, we offer a shared uh, road and boat transfer into Mahale. And that takes four and a half hours by car and two hours for that boat transfer. So just keep that in mind in terms of the transfer times that it would ideally take that full first day to get through into Mahale. And if they are using that transfer, we recommend again that on the way out, they spend their last night in Kigoma, just so that they can connect with those Air Tanzania flights. Now going into the destination, let's go to the next slide and look at Mahale. So in the video that you guys saw, unfortunately, we just revamped our entire camp and uh, the video that you see is, oh, I just lost power. Give me one second, sorry guys. <laughs> we can still one hear second. you, don't worry. I'm just gonna make sure they don't turn off the UPS on me or we're gonna lose internet. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so the power is just gonna come on. In the meantime, I have my flashlight. <laughs> so please bear with me. Trust Africa to hit you right when no, you need it. At least we can hear you. Oh goodness, the light is off completely. <laughs> <laughs> it's completely gone. Understand the power what is was gone. happening. <laughs> no worries. So I'll I'll power through this part of the presentation. So <laughs> Um, the video that you guys did see, unfortunately, was done just for our old camp. We actually rebuilt the entire lot just before COVID hit. And unfortunately, we haven't had the opportunity to create some new marketing content in terms of videos. So here's a glimpse at some photos of the new camp. So this is the lodge on Lake Tanganyika. You can see that crystal clear water that we're talking about and those lush green mountains that are just waiting to be explored. So our lodge is entirely run on solar power and we have the generators, obviously, as a backup. But ideally, the, the clients in camp know that they're not able to use hair dryers and facilities like that, but the camp is fully equipped to have 24 hour electricity. So located in the center of our camp is the main properties, guest dining area and lounge area. And then right behind the, the main area, you've got the 10 rooms hidden right into the forest. And every room has a view of the lake. So going to the next slide. Thank you, Gio. So that's a view of those mountains. So what I truly love about Mahale is you have that feeling of having a little piece of Africa all to yourself and the remoteness that comes with getting onto that boat journey as soon as the clients land in Mahale is really unique. It truly gives you a sense of peace and serenity and disconnect from the world. And one of the really untouched places waiting to be explored. So when clients are there, and that's something that Ed touched upon in the beginning of this talk, is unlike some of the experiences in Rwanda, you know, you don't have multiple tourists in the location. It's literally just lights came back on. It's literally just you and the clients in camp with you who can experience the chimpanzees that are there. So at a given time at our property, we have a maximum of uh, 10 rooms with 20 beds. And I, I know at Greystoke as well, it's approximately the same. So imagine the whole park, 1600 kilometers square, just to up to 40 people to explore. So really unique. Next slide, please. That's a view of the room. So you can really see how the rooms are nestled into the forest with the mountains in the backdrop. And in Mahale, for the chimpanzee trekking, ideally you want a group of six clients with every guide and tracker. So that's one of the rules with Tanapa. Children under the age of 12 are not able to participate in the chimpanzee trekking activities. And that's just one of the rules just to restrict disease transmission from children more prone to catching viruses to the chimpanzees. So it's part of the conservation efforts there. Um, in terms of the activities, the guide would ideally send his tracker off in the morning when the clients wake up for a quick coffee and breakfast into the forest to track for the chimpanzees. And he'd radio back to camp and let them know where the location of the chimps are. And then your group of clients, uh, ideally, if there's more than six, you'd split them up into two groups. They'd then follow the tracker into the forest and literally just walk right into the back of the property into the national park to go trek for the chimpanzees. So daily you're allowed one chimpanzee trek and chimpanzee viewing time is limited to one hour, which means if you get there as a group, you have your one hour and then you must leave so that other groups also get their time with the chimps. Next slide, please. So this is a real insight into the new setup that we have at Mahale. We're so proud of the rooms that we have now. They really encompass the nature and uh, our, our vision for keeping with the environment in terms of being ecologically sustainable with where we are located. 
Um, like I said, we've converted the entire property to being solar run. Um, and the rooms, as you can see, are entirely taking the elements of the nature around them in terms of the wood finishes, the thatch, um, but really comfortable for clients because we've got all the modern facilities of, you know, the USBs for charging the phones and the running hot water at the back, flush toilets and all the jets. Next slide, please. So here's a view of the lake, a lake that sometimes really looks like the ocean. So Lake Tanganyika is actually the second deepest lake in the world and borders uh, most of Tanzania on the western side. The length of the lake is actually about 675 kilometers. So really when I say that lake looks like an ocean, it really does on some days. So it's one of the main reasons I think people also visit this region. Uh, they don't focus on that. Usually it's the chimpanzees that bring clients into Mahali, but the lake tr truly has a lot to discover. And one of the activities that we do offer is the boat safari. So one boat safari is included per group per stay. And there are two options for the activities they can do on that boat safari. Either it's a nice leisurely cruise, a leisurely cruise along the lake uh, during sunset and we incorporate um, a viewing of hippos and crocodiles. So downside to Mahale is yes, you can't swim because a kilometer and a half of the, of the water has actually been converted into a marine reserve, which has resulted in a huge population of fish and now hippos and crocodiles settling into the region. So we don't encourage swimming. But ideally, one of the fantastic opportunities with that uh, marine reserve is now, because of how clear the water is, one of the activities is to take that boat cruise right on top of the families of hippos. And you can actually see them walking along the base of the lake as you are on the boat. So it's quite unique. When the lake is really calm, clients love it because it's such a unique experience. Unlike seeing them, you know, in Serengeti and, and, and even in Katavi, just out in the open, seeing the hippos under the water is really unique. Uh, and the other option as well for the boat safari is to do a fishing excursion. So that's something that we often do with our clients as well. All our food uh, in camp is made with lo local produce that's produced by a village just outside Mahale National Park. So we support the local uh, communities just outside the national parks. And next slide, please. And this is ideally what the clients come for. So the chimpanzee populations, primarily the family and community that we follow in Mahale is called the M group. And there's about just under 70 now uh, chimpanzees living in that community. In terms of the season of travel, ideally the best time to visit Mahale would be in the dry season in Tanzania. That's usually between June and October. Um, the rainy season is from March to April, and you're, we're usually closed in that time of the year. So we don't really encourage clients to come at that time of the year because trekking for chimpanzees in those mountains is not fun. So just keep that in mind for the schedules in terms of travel. Next slide, please. And this is a view of what the trekking experience looks like. So one of the rules for trekking is you have to maintain that distance of 10 meters. And with the current COVID situation, we've actually doubled that distance just to make sure that clients are, God forbid, if they, they do bring in the virus with them, we're just limiting the measures in terms of the exposure that the chimps could get. But ideally, everyone is wearing a mask during the trek and you won't wear it during going up the mountain but when you do the chimpanzees across them immediately the clients are required to wear the mask so just a reminder again the age limitation is 12 years in Mahale and 15 years in Gombe if that's another location that your clients are interested in next slide please and there you go there you have it uh, these are some of our fantastic team members one of the things that we value at Bali and Bali Lodges and Camps is the long-standing relationship that we have with our staff members. We're truly a Tanzanian company, Tanzanian grown, owned, and run with our staff members who come from the villages all around us to support the families and communities that they come from. So thank you again for your time. And if you have any questions, please do let us know. And you can always contact Adams and Butlers for any bookings that you might have. Thanks so many for the time. It was fantastic getting that introduction and uh, it was beautiful images as well because it really gives you a feel for the area. I always feel when you're tracking chimps, it's more a journey, whereas with gorillas, it's a destiny. Absolutely. Like it's the actual hours you spend doing it that is the memories you have as well and getting dirty and sweaty. <laughs> that's to the fun because like whenever I do it, I really enjoyed it. So thank you very much. So now we're going to um, go over to uh, Lizzie and we're going to go to Nomad Chatter Camp in Katavi. 
So um, we also have a video there. So you can decide when you want to show the video, Dizzy. Okay, great. <clears throat> Thank you very much for joining us all and for Adams and Butler for hosting us all. For Fatima, I can't wait to go and see your camp. It looks so beautiful. <laughs> well done. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to talk to you about uh, Katabi, Chada Katabi, which is in Western Tanzania. And Fatima, uh, Fatima kindly explained the Western schedule because the access is a bit tricky, but I'll come back to that. And maybe we just play the video now to give you an idea of the area. So there you have it. <laughs> this is probably one of the most wild parks you will visit. The, the entire park gets as many visitors in a, in a year as the Serengeti gets in a day. So you're very unlikely to come across other people. So for people who really want that real sense of wilderness, wild, it's very hard to beat Katabi. Um, it's a dry season camp, so really open between June and towards the end of November. Um, so lots of walking, fly camping even for the very adventurous folk, but it's really a park people come to who want to experience sort of a true wilderness. Um, we have six rooms. It's not very child friendly actually because our minimum age here is only is 12. And that's simply because there is so much game that moves through camp camps under these lovely tr tamarind trees. So the elephants are always around. So you're quite likely to, to uh, come across them as you're walking to and fro from your room. So not ideal for kids, but it is really a, a, wild, a wild experience. You feel you're in the middle of nowhere and you feel like you're sort of discovering Africa for the first time. So it's, it's not necessarily for every sort of Every, everybody's cup of tea, but for people who want real wilderness, it's very hard to, to beat this place. And it does combine well with Mahali. So as uh, Fatima said earlier, our 
access days on Mondays and Thursdays from Arusha and also via the Serengeti. So that's the, the kind of easiest way to get in to Kitabi. Um, yeah, I think that's really what I can tell you. Uh, more about the animals. We have huge herds congregating in the dry season because they, they concentrate around what little game, sorry, what little water is left. So you get hundreds of buffalo, not just a few. You get herds of a hundred, hundreds and hundreds of buffalo. Hippos congregate into this tiny little bit of water that's left. So you again see hundreds of hippos in a tiny area. The crop behavior is also quite interesting because they burrow into the banks. Um, it's sort of their survival mechanism through through the year. So it's it's very interesting game game wise. And we do like to get people out and walking to kind of really experience that wilderness. And then for those who want the sort of even more of a thrill is the fly camping, spending a night under the stars, under a little mosquito gauze tent. Um, and that really takes you sort of to, into the sort of true wilderness. Um, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> That's brilliant, Lizzie. Actually, I think one of the best experiences in Africa, besides walking in the bush and obviously chimpanzee trekking and gorillas, etc., is going asleep, looking at the stars and waking up with the sound of the birds. So no true. Birds. And I, I don't think you can see stars like that elsewhere where there's just no lights, there's no cities. So amazing stars. Yeah. But it's just a wonderful experience just seeing the stars as you go to sleep and waking up with the birds. So that's fantastic. That's absolutely brilliant. I, I hope everyone sees now why you should never sell Tanzania and Kenya together. There's so much to do in Tanzania. It's very much a standalone <laughs> destination. So uh, finally, our last presenter today, we're going over to uh, Zanzibar now. And uh, we're going to have Sujit, who's going to tell us all about it. So hi, Sujit, how are you? Good. Hello, everyone. And uh, thank you for attending. Can we have the video? So we immediately fly on to Zanzibar. Thanks for that, Jill. So um, this video has been totally untouched. It's actually a guest video. Um, 
And if you don't mind, I'm going to share you my screen with Zawadi only, which is what I'm going to talk to you about today, um, situated on the southeast coast of the island, an hour away from Stone Town and the airport. Um, Zawadi is actually part of the Zanzibar collection, which is a collection of four beautiful, very unique properties, all owned, built, run and designed by the same family. Zawadi is all about the views of the Indian Ocean. Um, you've got 12 villas that sit up on a cliff, unobstructed views of the ocean, and the land slopes in to create this very private cove, unlike our other three properties who've got this long wide stretch of beach, um, Zawadi's beach is totally inaccessible except from the resort itself. Um, beautiful villas over 150 square meters in size, very different design and style compared to our other three properties. And the main uh, asset of Zawadi is actually its location. Just on this part of the island, there's a channel that's running through the Indian Ocean. And um, it's because of this channel that we've got these amazing views, but it's also uh, because of this channel that guests have got access to the water all day long, regardless of the high tide or low tide. And what you see right now on your screens is actually taken during the low tide. And you can clearly see the channel there. Um, Zawadi, like Palms, does not welcome kids under 16, although it is all inclusive. Um, unless, of course, it's taken on exclusive use. You've got different restaurants for breakfast, lunch, dinner, uh, different bars for the evening and for the day. We've got shuttles that run to and from Baraza for Zawadi guests at no extra cost. Uh, should the guests want to use some more specialized facilities such as um, spa treatments or fitness center or just have a dinner or drink somewhere else. Um, Zawadi is really a place for your guests who are looking for total, complete relaxation, remote, not having anything to do, just taking the views of the Indian Ocean. Being part of the Zanzibar collection, um, you do have the option of also combining with our other properties, uh, mainly Baraza or Palms, to suit with the standard and the service of Zawadi. That was me in or us in a nutshell. Um, you will get all uh, detailed information from Adams and Butler, but um, I also would like to invite all of you uh, to come and test our properties. Uh, Zanzibar Collection is an experience. It's not a group of resorts. And I strongly believe that um, hotels can be inspected, but experiences need to be tested. I leave that to you. Thank you all. Thanks, Million Sujid. Um, the other thing, uh, just that people uh, sometimes don't remember about Zanzibar, there's so many things to see and do. Like I know Rebecca, when like she is an expert diver, and when she went to uh, Zanzibar, she was just blown away in our office. Like Rebecca's in our office. Uh, for those who don't know her, um, but um, she was blown away with the depth of, um, literally the depth of the uh, diving that's to be found there. And then, like if any of you, you know, read about those explorers in the olden days of the stories that I used to you know curl up in bed and read about Richard Burton and all those it's amazing history in Zanzibar and then again the spices and everything that you can visit and see there so there's a lot to see and do and um, I'm hoping I didn't make a mistake because uh, up until recently um, you know because uh, Zanzibar and Tanzania are the same country you didn't need a COVID test so Sujit that hasn't changed if you're coming in from uh, the mainland you don't need a COVID test going to Zanzibar do you? If you're coming from the mainland no uh, yeah, not any, no, no, no. But the new leadership has actually put in some very uh, disciplinary rules and regulations, and um, I can send the latest uh, stuff over to you, Sherban, so that you can uh, forward it on. Brilliant. But it's, yeah. so at the moment, uh, because of COVID, it is a good combination with Tanzania because a lot of our clients. Uh, you know, in the past have done Kenya and uh, Zanzibar together. So um, that's fantastic. By the way, we had a lovely comment from an agent that came in privately. Um, I won't mention her, uh, but she said it was so eye-opening, never even considered these areas of Tanzania before, which is great, uh, because that's what we were hoping to do is open up Tanzania um, as a destination and so that you can see all the possibilities and all the hidden gems that are there to be discovered. So um, if anyone has any questions, um, you know, if they want to ask any of the partners on uh, about anything, uh, please feel free to um, unmute yourselves or put it in the chat box or whatever. 
Um, as you mentioned earlier, that we did do the classic Tanzanian safari last uh, week. So we're going to be sending a recording to bo of both to the people who registered for today because we had over 200 people who registered uh, this week as well. So uh, we know you all need those recordings. So we'll be sending those on. And then we should probably also send this recording to the people who did part one uh, last week, uh, if they're not, even if they haven't registered for this one, just so that they have it as well. So. Ah, accessible, wheelchair, uh, visually impaired. That's a question there uh, coming in, if someone wants to answer that regarding accessibility. Sujit, do you have uh, rooms that are suitable for people who are less able? Uh, not at Zawadi, unfortunately. At Baraza, we've uh, had, and uh, at Breezes and Palms as well. But Zawadi, unfortunately, not. No, but the other properties can cater. Yes. And uh, Fatima and Bridget and Lizzie, yourselves? So just because of the landscape in terms of the boat safari, as well as the sand between the two um, tents in the main area, ideally, it wouldn't be ideal for somebody who is needing a wheelchair to be able to access the property. And of course, the primary activity being chimpanzee trekking. But in, in saying that as well, we've had a lot of elderly um, grandparents join their families and just come and sit at the lodge, take a book, unwind and take in the scenery and just enjoy that. And it's been really easy. And all we do is just allocate the, uh, them a room that's really close to camp. And our team and our staff are really supportive for making it possible for them to get and in and out of their rooms. It can be spoiled rotten by your, your team. So uh, your room is hard. <laughs> it's just the activities that would have that limitation. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. And that probably applies to most of the camps, wouldn't it? Bridget and Lizzie? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, for, for us, people are welcome, but we're not really designed for that. So, yeah, if people don't mind us sort of lifting up their wheelchairs and things like that, then then they're most welcome. But uh, it's not it's not like there's smooth ramps and things into the into the rooms because they are tents in the bush. So, yeah, but we do welcome them. It's not that we don't want them, but it's it is a little bit tricky. Yeah. yeah, they would need assistance. Um, we're the same situation, you know, they're not, um, it's, it's the, you know, the sand and gravel pathways. There are a few steps to get up into the room, but once you're in the tents, they've got very big decks and things, you can easily move around, um, but you would need assistance. You know, it's not like we've got special rails or anything like that in the showers or, you know, the toilets and things like that. So they're not dedicated, um, yeah you know they're not set up um particularly for someone who's got disabilities or anything like that they would need assistance but we would welcome them too perfect yeah so that's that's brilliant any other questions that anyone has okay so maybe we wrap it up there and um, you know if you have any questions you think of later please feel free to send an email oh is uh, zanzibar seasonal um, theoretically speaking, we've got the rains in April and May, uh, but the weather changes every single time. That's considered to be the low season. Otherwise, Zanzibar is really all year round. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. That's brilliant. Um, so we'll just give one, uh, another few uh, moments for uh, any other questions to come in. But as I said, um, you know, if you've any questions to think of later, you know, uh, please feel free to send them on and we can answer them for you. So um, next week, um, uh, thanks, Gloria. <laughs> next week, um, uh, I will be attending a Virtuoso, so we won't be having a webinar. But the following week, we're hoping to have one on handicrafts. Um, and uh, Richard uh, will be organizing that one. Uh, well, he'll be um, sourcing the, the partners and the content for that one. Uh, so it'll be more traditional handicrafts uh, that we'll be doing a webinar on. So we look forward to seeing you the week after next. Uh, thank you for um, joining us. And as I mentioned, uh, these webinars will be going up on our website. So you can access them again. We'll also be sending them out to everyone who registered. Thanks a lot. And thank you very much to all the partners for giving up the time to present. We really do appreciate it. And also Ed as well for all his hard work in the background with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining. See you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.